Hey, hey, what's up? My name is Grab Baby. I represent this New York City thing to the fullest. Team Bang Dope Gang on deck. And this is Real Fans, Real Talk. Respect it. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Where Arthur Dom is tripped young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the art. Cost. Even tell a neighbor, tell a Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. I'm Mark the Statman Scavage. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. Not only is it Super Bowl Sunday coming up in only a few days. The biggest day in sports for most sports fans out there. But we also have a very special guest, Brooklyn's own rapper, D Chambers, joining us shortly on the program. But before we get into the sports and our special guest, let me introduce my main man to my left, the one and only Trip Young, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, what's going on, man? Yo, first of all, I got to say this, because you writes that, man. It has been a very good week. We was out balling for peace this past weekend with, uh, you know, a friend of the show, Ron H. to Hargrave. Then, on top of that, my wifey, my wifey boo, wifey for lifey, Serena Williams, she has, you know, made it into the finals of the Australian Open, the first Grand Slam of the year. So she's going to be facing off against the number two seed, who's really not on her level, Maria Sharapova. So, you know, we're going to take that home. And she's going to come home with, with the Grand Slam, just like we came home with the Grand Slam last year, you know, the best TV series award, you know. But, you know, that's that's type of things we do, you know. So I got to shout out Wifey Boo for that because she's definitely out in Australia right now, you know, kicking butt and taking names, as the slogan goes. And then... My main man, LBJ, is back. He got the Cavs looking real good. Kyrie dropping 55 on him. Man, we looking good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a great mood. Super Bowl Sunday. What's up? Tom Too Cool made it through the Flake Gate. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the topic that everyone has been talking about, the Flake Gate. It's kind of taking the headlines away from the game itself. And, I mean, my, my opinion on it is the refs notice when the balls are, are deflated. I mean... We find out about it after the fact, the day after the game. And, I mean, if there was some cheating going on, there should have been some type of uh, commotion during the actual game itself. And, I, I mean, the ref touches the ball, throws it to another ref. They yeah. place it at the hash mark. It's I don't understand how this could be a controversy the day after the game. And it seemed like, you know, the Patriots had it under control regardless. I'm not going to make an excuse for them cheating if they did cheat. But uh, I, I don't know. I can't make heads or tails of it. But it's been going on way too long. I'm kind of sick of hearing about it. But, uh, I mean, what's your thoughts on uh, the whole Deflategate scandal since I mean, it's our first time live since the controversy? Listen, you know, you know, it's my main man, Tom Too Cool. So you know, you know how I'm already gonna be a little sensitive about that subject, but um, but no, you know, listen, like you said, Stat man, you know, I mean, the refs, you know, touch the footballs, you know, every pretty much every down, you know, yeah. they they pick it up, they toss at it around. At least one, sometimes two, every down. Yeah, so. exactly. So, you know, why wasn't this something that was brought to the attention? you know, during the game, one, and then two, I mean, just a lot of controversy surrounded it. Now they're talking about they got one of the, 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 the attendants or something. He took it, took a stop for like a 30 seconds or a minute into the bathroom. So he, he could have done something right there. I mean, I don't know how you could deflate 30, 12 ball or 11 like, balls. Is that really in 30 what, seconds, but what Belichick and Brady were banking on? That they would <laughs> right. get this whole conspiracy while this person goes to the bathroom to go and deflate these balls? Like, I mean. I, I don't know. And you know what? This, this is crazy because it's like, all right, because now it's just already like, all right, well, it's the, it's, it's the, uh, you know, the Patriots. It's like, well, we already have Spygate. So, you know, it's just like, all right, so it's possible that they could be, 
doing this, you know? And I'm just like, well, come on, man. You got to give these guys a break. They out here, man. They, you know, they, and, and they beat, they did. They beat my Ravens. So I'm, I'm not even mad. I can't, I can't knock the hustle. You know what I mean? But, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a lot, and it is taken away from the game. So, you know, but we got to wait and see. Listen, all I know is my man Tom Too Cool will be playing this Sunday, you know, as He's got a little as, bit of a cold, so hopefully he gets over that. He, but, yeah, he just, I mean, he if just Aaron Rodgers could play with a bat, a bum calf, and get a, get a victory. Listen, uh, I'm not, I'm not. Mad. You know what? Either way, honestly, I'm not even mad. Even if the Seahawks take it, you know, I still, I still gotta, gotta support them because you know Russell Wilson, only the second African American quarterback to win a Super Bowl as a as a starter. So you know, I still gotta support that, and that'll be number two. So if they get it, but either way, I'm good. You know, and. Listen, man, it's a Super Bowl. I'm, I'm looking for some wings, some nachos, you know. I don't know if we can say we can drink beer on it, yeah, because I know the kids I watch think, the show. But you know what? It's a Super Bowl. That's what we do Super Bowl Sunday, man. I'm going to sit back, man. I'm going to have me a cause Light or Corona or something. Somebody, you know. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to sports fans and even non-sports fans. Huge day, the big game, Super Bowl Sunday. Our official Super Bowl predictions coming up but we got to introduce our special guest and before he comes on the set we're going to show you uh the shake the block video which has been shaking the block with uh with good reviews out there uh featuring uncle murder as well it's uh, new york yeah i know you know building ladies and gentlemen we're going to play that video so you guys could uh get an idea of what uh, some of his talents out there. So if we could get that video rolling, please. What's up? You already know what it is when we step on that block. Uncle Murder, what's up? Shameless, what up? Shake the block. They know what we do when we hop out that big tour and shake the block. They don't know if we got that thing on us or not. Shake the block. What? Shake the block. Shush. Shake the block. You know from Coney Island. Shake the block. That's what we do out there. Shake the block. The whole Brooklyn up there. Uncle Murder, what up, Shake the block. Shake the block. Pass me a brick if I don't get signed. Okay. Fresh off the scale, I break it down and dime. Son, I'm never gonna snitch. Did all my time. All my time. The road was on my heels. I was in that crib by nine. nine. Get work, flip work, swerve in that jazz. Swerve. Ten dime pieces, tell them throw it in the bag. Throw it in the bag. Throwing the feds off, jumping in and out of cash. Gone. Could fly to Dubai off my gift of gas. <laughs> then jail Obama hit me. Told me hurry up and shake the what? block. Now I'm in the booth, whipping work with two extra pots. Plans to do shows, VIP, get extra block. Try and violate in your face and get extra shot. Once they hear the sound and you fall, gotta shake the block. Size of the shell on the floor will shake a cop. Had a block hot like hot 9-7. After the smoke cleared, the block will look like 9-11. Damn. Flying on the highway, doing what I do. Listening to the pit bulls from 12 to 2. They saying we the best, I'm starting to feel like it And all this pure sour, I'm starting to feel psychic Troy Ave said, no chuck in your rap. I say use the beat, sound like New York when you rap New York, New York. I'm D Chambers, no time for that small talk Bet I shake the block, Uncle Murder let that fall Shake the block Shake the block Chambers, what up? Shake the block Shake the block, shake the block. Whoa, shake the block. Call me Allen, what up? Shake the block. Shake the block. Shake the block. Shake the block. I rap about people I shoot and make the song hot. They get a clean version of so he can shake the block. Kill you in front of your pops, made him throw up. He watching you die, but he ain't get to watch you grow up. Deadbeat, I'ma do the same thing. Your brother, they got different fathers. A few is used to f they mother. They mother was up. This hit pop shit. I'm Pappy Mason from Queens. When he got the cop hit. The realest rapper you gon' ever meet. My nickname is the kid that disrespect police. I let her give me head. What's all the complaining about? She wanted to f she was mad when I him in the mouth. I made her swallow it all, son. To act like I had to leave after my phone run. I'm like, my man life in danger She think I'm going to kill something for D. James Shake the block You already know what's up, homie Shake the block I mean, I'm sure you ride and 
you know what it is. Shake the block, hop out. Shake the block, what's up? Shake the block. You already know it's WM2, warning the town. Shake the block. When I'm on that strip, that's what we looking to do. Shake the block. Shake the block, what's up? Shake the block. Guys, we're so live right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here up. live with uh, Coney Island styling, Brooklyn Zone, D Chambers, me personally born on Coney Island as well. Oh, oh, Greg, 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 okay. <laughs> there you go. So uh, before we get into your career, we're talking about the Super Bowl, big game this Sunday. Every man in the world out there is excited. The girls are outside, uh, excited for the Super a Bowl. Lot of and on. a lot of parties going on. People are excited about even the commercials. Excited about everything. Big game, big matchup. Tom Brady versus Russell Wilson and the Seahawks Legion of Boom defense. Great game. Might have our first back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion in 10 years. Before myself and Trip Young give our official predictions, we're going to have our guests do the honors first. Who do you got in the big game? I got my money on the Seahawks. I got my money on them. I, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's, it don't even, it's just the chemistry. Yeah. And I say I'm a, I'm a basketball kind of guy, and I'm into boxing. But as far as the football, I'm going with the Seahawks this year. I predicted who was going to win last year, and they won last year. All right, there you have it. Seahawks uh, Legion of Boom defense. You think is going to shut down uh, Tom Brady and the Patriots? I like the Patriots. I don't want to talk too bad about that. You know what I mean? I like the Patriots. It is a tough call. I like the Patriots. I like the Patriots. I'm probably staying away from as far as the betting is concerned. See, so you can stay away from it, but I got to answer it. Oh, I'm going to my official prediction, but I'm not sure if I'm going to throw money on it. But I got money. I got money on the Seahawks. Tom Brady is a good player, but I can't. You know, I'm going to say the Seahawks. All right, Trip Young, your official prediction. You know, you know, go with my man Tom too cool, man. Because uh, he's too cool. Or yeah, like, that's why, because he's too cool. He got that's, that's why they might lose. Right now he got Gronkowski <laughs> back healthy. You know, they're gonna they gonna do some damage. And and, and Darrell Rivas, he want to show that he's the best cornerback in the league. It's not Richard Sherman. I mean, I still I still think so too. But you know, it is what it is. But I'm going I'm going with the Patriots on this one. But like I said, if the Seahawks win. You know, Russell Wilson still only the second, you know, African American quarterback starting in the Super Bowl to win it. So I still got to support that either way. All right. Uh, keep in mind, your name is Flip Young. So while you're young, you still can flip it. Well, it's Trip Young. <laughs> trip, so it's not Trip. Flip, 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 flip my name. You trip it anyway. Tripping, well, I might be. He's just riding. Oh, right, so right, 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 right. I got you. I got you. But we definitely, you know, it's going to be a great game either way. I'm looking forward With to it. With a Raiders hat on. Next. That's the next. I'm from Brooklyn, though. So I still have to make sure. I'm going to make sure. Uh, I had to make sure. All right, but uh, my my official prediction, I'm going with Trip Young on this one. I'm not a Patriots fan. I'm not a Tom Too Cool fan at all. <laughs> but he's just got too many weapons. Gronkowski out there, healthy, who's just a beast, and almost seems like it doesn't matter who's uh, on him. He's just catching over people's heads. And even if they do shut him down, you have Edelman, you have Brandon LaFell, you have. Um, Amendola, who, who makes an appearance if everyone else is shut down. So the, you have that offensive line that gives Tom Brady a year and a half to throw and makes every single running back that they throw out there have a great game because they're just a good passing block. And this is line not Peyton Manning. He does not throw ducks. Yeah, so. He can actually throw down the field. Tom Brady has some failures. Also, on the. Well, he's playing Eli, but, you know, that's different. On the flip side of it, you know, the Seahawks' defense is great, but at the same time, I, I think that their offense against the Patriots' defense, I think it's probably going to be a low-scoring game. Um, you know, probably, I'm, I'm going to say maybe uh, 10 to 17 in favor of the Patriots. That's, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, low-scoring game, I think the... The offense on the Seahawks side doesn't have that many weapons other than Marshawn Lynch and the Patriots defense is good against the run, good against the pass, as Trip Young mentioned, Revis Island. Um, not that many great receivers on the Seahawks, so 
I, I think that the Patriots will come up. Uh, but, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't put money on you it. You sound it's half not, and half, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's It's too close to call. Cool, you just said a lot of good things for the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if, I, if I had to put money on it, I would go with the Patriots. Um, and I, there's a lot of fans out there who, who you know, Hopefully, won't be disappointed because you got. If you're saying you got your money on the Seahawks, I don't know. I, no, I, I say I have a feeling. Oh, okay. Money okay. And, and the feeling is two different okay, things. I just want to make sure. <laughs> There's a lot of fans out there who are hating the Patriots right now with the flake gate. It might be putting their money on the Seahawks, and you know, bet what you had, not what you hate. I always say. But they, so. the Patriots do have strong defense, and they're good runners. But I think overall, the Seahawks are here to make to make an impact, and they're here for a reason. You know, uh, if Josh was here, we'd be talking about the, the Giants, but too bad they wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm a diehard Giants fan myself. <laughs> Obviously, native Brooklyn Knight, go with the New York team. And I'm sure Tom Brady is happy that Eli Manning is not in the Super Bowl. That's for sure. Because, <laughs> you know, he'd be getting another uh, Super Bowl L added to his list. <laughs> but let, 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 let's go into your career. Growing up in Coney Island, what got you started into rapping? Uh what got me into music actually was always being around it. Um, I was one of those dudes who actually, you know, I was the gift and the curse. I could have even went to the streets. I went to college. You know, you have the best of both worlds. I, you know, I felt like kind of like Kyle Watson out there. It's like you got, you're fighting for a positive core, but you're surrounded by negativity. So once it was a group of people that came together and said, yo, let's just start playing with this music. Let's do it. And this was in between times of just trying not to go to jail, like just the minor stuff. Like, we went to school, we went to stuff, but it's just certain negative stuff in Coney Island you cannot dodge. It's just that the environment is just totally different. And at that time, my boy Liaison, he was the one who always had the management. And uh, the first time Smack came to the neighborhood, that was like a claim to fame. And I always was supporting him, and I always was rapping while I was caught up in the middle of things. But then when I caught my gun charge you know I don't, I don't brag on these things but i talk from experience it gave me time to you know i actually beat it and i said you know what this is this is going to keep me away from all the other stuff because you know out of sight out of mind so once i started doing music and connected with a lot of other people that was making moves doing music i took it more seriously but then i already had uh still not having enough of the streets I caught a light bid, and I think that whole 06, 07, I was gone. I just was just reading about, just reading magazines like the Double XL. Reading, I did a bunch of shows before I went in. So a lot of stuff I did before I went in, but it was too late. But I knew exactly what to do when I came home. And being from Coney Island, a lot of people just know Coney Island for basketball and the movie The Warriors. So. I'm yeah. just going to say, because you have the Warrior Project right. out there. But see, it's out, funny. When, I, when I, I always wore a Coney Island hat, I never wore too many team hats. If it wasn't the Yankees, if it wasn't the Mets here and there, because it matched, it was just a Coney Island hat. And I, and I always said, nobody from Coney Island ever had a break musically. And I think it became that because some people were just happy with what's going on in the comfort zone. And it, and it happens to even New York artists, because once you burn down New York, you got to go to other states. So, but Coney Island, nobody leaves. It's one way in, one way out. A lot of people just find excuses to make things. So when I came up with the Warriors and, and re reflected it to the movies, because like, the first thing in the movie, the Warriors went out the, yeah. to, to, to make something happen. They went to go hear the word and still wound up in tons of trouble and had to fight for their way back. So that's like the same mentality I use towards music is to go out there, and if by any means, whatever needs to get done to get known and get heard and remember, like, Coney Island could stand on its own for whatever talent it is and just recognize us, you know, that's why I go hard for it. And I, and I think for the last two years, maybe three, people has respected Coney Island more now. It's a topic. And the first thing they say is, like, yo, you know D. Chambers? They already know Coney Island. Yeah, because you're definitely, like, I've noticed... The, the last two years, I mean, especially now, you got the you got the shake the block. We just saw that with Uncle Murder. Right. You got a lot of joints with uh, Fred the Godson. Right. You got Second Chinks. One. Chinks. You got Chinks on, on there. So it's not you know it's not like Joe Smoke from the block on the. But I'll be honest with you, a lot of my fame also came not only just for a lot of shows that I did 
on the underground level. I did a lot of open mics. Like I don't think I don't think I still go back to those places like the Pyramid. You got an underground whatever. Uh, music award. Yeah, the oh, UMAs. Oh. Yeah, 2012. I got a couple of awards in oh, short you, time. Come on, man. That's in that's short that's time, UMA in 2012 was like the big stepping. That was BB King. Board. That was big BB Kings. Cause I'm not gonna lie, 2011, I made a big fuss about it. I made a big fuss about it, and I was just like. How much things do I need to do with no budget to get recognized even in the underground? Yeah, and, you know what you're talking about that. <laughs> so I'm like, what, what does it take? And, and then honestly, with me and my PR at uh, Chanel, it was the branding. Mm -hmm. And once I mastered the branding, because everybody was like, okay, D. Chambers, Corey on Warriors, now what? Like, Warriors is not yours. Yeah. So I had to come up with the brand warrior mentality. I didn't switch it. I just made something that's mine. I, what I do is a mentality, but backpedal a little bit a lot of my claim to fame came from smack URL TV nobody knew what I was doing I did everything that I'm doing now but once smack took a liking to us mm -hmm. and like you know once again liaison had a video then when I came home I met math I met Matt. I didn't meet math doing music and stuff like that I met him in an event we was buddies we, we chopped it up a few times and then, you know, of course, math, math was on his rampage. It was him versus yeah. T-Rex at the time. And then when they had the URL TV cipher, it was me, liaison, and hands, and hands with news on that. But at the end of the day, all three of us was from Coney Island. And I used that as a stepping stone in one of the top of the resumes to go anywhere. Shout out to Math too, another another friend of the show. He gave us one of the craziest interviews. We probably won't be able to play it on the live show, but we'll upload it to the YouTube channel. Play that man. It's, at the end of the day, it's the same questions I'm gonna ask us. Well, oh, well, it's just, just the language. Oh, 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 <laughs> so yeah, we got a screen now for the live show, but it definitely will be up on the on the website though. But he's actually gonna come through and check us out. Actually, yeah, I, I, I told him to meet me here. Truthfully, oh, so I, I, I told him to because we're about to go to Westbury. We're about to go to Long Island. We we'll do some hosting. Probably do a show out there. But, you know, not taking away from my homie and stuff, but when we, once we created NYB, now you believe, and, you know, we got Cortez, we got Holler, we got Hands, we got Bless, we, got, we took everybody from different sides of New York, period, yeah. or any type of, and that mo created a movement, and, and it also put a microscope on what everybody was doing individually. Is there anybody else that we don't know about that will be coming out that's a part of NYB? I think a lot of people don't know about Ismatic, and I don't think a lot of people don't know about Bless. And, and, you know, even Bear, like Bear, you know, he went in and came out, but, you know, some some of us are adults. We have kids, own cribs, some of us got jobs, mm -hmm. and it is not as thick as it used to be because, you know, people get bills and stuff. But as artists, we have different people that come around that does different things now, which is good. And we still hold our own, like Cortez got murder half. Yeah. Howard the Don got loyalty over money. And you got me, Royal Mentality. You know, so it's like those are just three different brands. And my boy Bless got game time, then you got Asthmatic. And we're not, it's one big gumbo pot, and we're just pulling all the following. Now, I think with the brand Warrior Mentality, they didn't even know it was mine. I can say it a hundred times, but when they see the, the actual symbol, mm. and I treated the clothes separate from the music. So sometimes people will know me for fashion, and don't even know me for, for the music. So once I created the brand, that's when people would be able to uh, be like, oh, okay, I understand what he's talking about now. Before it was just, you know, another freestyle or another, it wasn't no concept, it wasn't no something to attach to. So now I think with the Warrior Mentality brand, they have something to attach to. Now, I want to go back, because now you talk about Smack and, and you know, his help. On, in the URL, I, I mean, I don't. I can count. There's a lot of battles where your name is brought up. Somebody <laughs> reference you. Somebody says said something about you. I know you're familiar. Your famous slogan is six two. No time for the small. No talk. time. They don't really kill him. That's what it is. Well, that's my question. They don't really kill him. Why haven't you gotten to the ring yet? Will you get into the ring? And if you do get into the ring, who would be the first person that you would like to battle? I hate to bite Cassidy on that one, but like, who? If the money's there. I'm going to take it. Like, I mean, I exercise. I spar with a lot of these dudes. And, and I have witnesses that I spar with dudes off camera. We be joking. Yeah. But I think it also stems from me just getting love from Smack. And they be like, yo, who is this dude? Why is he always up there? You always want to know why the guy is up there. But that guy up there, it might, it might be a reason. I also tell him, keep in mind, I'm like Shane Tsung in Mortal Kombat. I sat around 
and watched everybody's special moves. I seen yeah. what the best they had to offer, the worst they had to offer. You know, um, I have fun with it because at the end of the day, I still get the perks from it. I get to do ciphers. No. I get to, you know, I just try to outwork them. One thing I just try to say, that's one thing I always say, I don't battle. But that's why I work twice as hard because a, a battle or rapper is the new mainstream artist now. You know, it, it may not get the money like Rick Ross and these guys per show, per host, per host hosting, but think about it. Who else is getting like 5000 10000 20000 40,000, 250,000 yeah. for three minutes of pain. You rapping for three minutes. Some of them are unlimited. I don't care. Even if you battle the whole day, who's making 5,000 in one day? It's true. And, and I think it also made it fun. So now to see everybody attaching to it, I've always been around it. They can't say I'm a new guy that, that clinged on to what was going on. And truthfully, I love it. And... If the money was right, I'd jump in that ring. I always said that. But it would be on the smack stage. It, I think it would only be right Yeah. if, if I did it with on I talked enough smack on smack to be on smack. Have they have they asked you to battle? Nah, smack. Me and smack got a different relationship. Uh, a lot of times I hope with a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes. For those that do know me, shout out to Beasley, shout out to North, shout out to Chico. Mm -hmm. And uh, behind the scenes, I, I connect a lot of people. I also find a lot of new talent. I also, you know, different ties with Fuse TV, people that know these things, different PRs that help with sponsorship and I can find red carpet events. I connect these things. And, I, and my thing is, to smack it, you know, he created a platform for me. I just find different ways to keep it growing. Yeah, I can never walk away from that, no matter how, how far I go, no matter what I do. I did a lot of shows. When you when you talk about mainstream, what was it like the first time you worked with somebody big like an Uncle Murder or Heard? I always knew. I knew Uncle Murder in the streets before music. And this is this is one thing. I was a flunky first. I always would say that. I wasn't the toughest guy in the street. But I was on that curb and there were stories that was told. And you probably could, you know, for people that think it's a game, they can go ask around. But I'm not here to glorify that. What I'm saying is, when I met Uncle Murder, it was on another time. And I think that this is around the time like... 05, 06, and Mano uh, just had got a deal. And he just won the Underground Music Awards. At that time, I was still green to all that. My song was just coming home. I, I didn't, you know what I mean? It didn't compute how big it was and what you could get from it and you could actually maintain the money from it. What about hearing yourself on the radio, Hot 97? Now, nah, that, was, that, was, that was big. Now, nah, that was like, it made, that was life changing for me. Uh, K Slave was the first one to play something of mine on the radio. And I told myself, I always was listening to the drama hour when I was, you know, in that four building, you know, before we were up north. And the, everybody knows you turn it on at night, it's the drama hour. Mm -hmm. Everybody getting the rip, they listen to the drama hour, you hear the most. He's the one of the DJs who will take the risk. Lately, it's been DJ Self who will give people that prime time slightly to take a risk with new talent. K Slave, if he likes what you got to say, you know, you had to drop in there, you better make sure it's straight stunting in there somewhere. Yeah. You possibly would play it, but K Slay definitely made my hood happy, not just me. But when they to say Coney Island on the radio and whenever time that, that comes up, that's just like a, a whole different feeling. And you tap it into the whole tri state, like worldwide. All right, so now all right, now that we we up to speed a little bit, I wanna I do wanna jump into Balling for Peace, because that's what kind of brought us all together here. Shout out to Haran, too, for putting everything together over there. H2O. That's right. Now, Chambers, you got on the court. <laughs> now, we got some we got some footage, because you know real fans, real talk, we was out there. We filmed the game. Oh, so we got the whole game. We got the whole game? We got the whole game. We just had me messing up. No, no, no. Come on. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. We didn't do that. So we got we got a we got yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we got we got a we got a little short clip that we put together only the highlights, man. We don't we don't try to show the bad stuff up here, man. Hey, just listen, just it, a it, good, it, good, it, good it, pump, bad pump, yeah. so it's the same to me. 
So we definitely, we definitely got there. You definitely was out there, out there balling, working hard. One thing I noticed, man, it was roughly a lot of the guys running up and down that court like that. By the end of the game, Jim Jones almost passed out, man. Hey, yo, Jim Jones had a quiet 16. No. Yeah, he did. He did. Jim Jones did yeah, yeah, too, yeah. man. Jim Jones yeah, out there. Yeah, 16. Yeah. Even out they were scared of copper. One or the other. Yeah, 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 you know, we just let that man go. I think we had a lot of good highlights in that game. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. We we actually we're gonna go through the highlight. We waiting for Haran because Haran's gonna come back. And he's gonna join us, so we're gonna run through the highlights of the game when he comes on to the set. Again. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, definitely shout out to H2O because he reached out to me. Actually, my homegirl uh, snaps NYC on Instagram. She reached out to me and said if I wanted the ball. You know, me being from Coney Island, I was like, yeah, let's get it. I mean, you come know, on, man, and, and, and it's for a good cause, man. You gotta Why love not? that. It was a charity. It was we're gonna we're gonna play uh, some of your highlights uh, first, though. Um, you said Haran's coming. On no, it'll be ne yeah next next week yeah. when he comes. We're gonna do the rest, yeah. but today we're just gonna play Chambers. We, we we're gonna play uh, the clip over there, a short clip of uh, the blooper reel for DJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's highlights. That's highlights. <laughs> I mean, look, it's like looking like we got you at the foul line. You got to make your free throws. Oh, that was what that. You know what I'm saying? Took you a day. That was the mentals, you know. Come on, oh, that was two. That was two. See, that's two. Come on, come on, man. Look at the head. Look at the head. Look at the head. All through the light, where you at? Right, come on, I skipped oh, my loop right there. I gotta give Luke some work. Look at that, where you at? Where you at? Come on, chill, chill. Look at the pass. Look at the pass. Oh, come on! Chill, this is the pass, man. Come on. You like that pass? Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Ah! Yeah, yeah, I was out there. Come on, man. Yeah, I was out there. I was out there. I stood out there. I still got little flames in me. Yeah, you know what I mean, man. We ain't gonna try the turnovers. We ain't gonna do that. I mean, come on, I had to go through the footage, man. Look at the table. If you got that, you Luke <laughs> dived on the floor one time. We got his too. We got it all. We got it all. Okay, that's my boy. He was reaching. Yeah, he yeah. was. He was. Nah, but you, you definitely played a good game. Everybody played a good game, man. And like I said, man, for a great cause. Oh, you know, a... if you if you didn't come out, you know what I mean? You really missed a, a great thing. You know, all of these guys that, that came out, you know, just show love. Just support. You know, when, when somebody's doing something positive, we need to do more of supporting it and come out and show love. You know, even, even if you can't make it, you should definitely be passing on the word to somebody that can't make it because you know Haran did Haran did a great thing this past uh, Saturday. So shout out to H two O again, you know. And punch dollars. Yeah, and, and punch dollars. Shout out to shout out to you guys, you know. The girl Amber Lee and the other girl. Uh, sorry if I forgot your name, but you know I know her name starts with an M. The well, girls was beating down that Instagram, making sure everybody was on time. Everything that that line was around the corner. I was just happy to see everybody in the building at the same mm -hmm. time, and it wasn't cliche. It wasn't, you know, uh, Pacific bottle service flying around or yeah, you know. And that, you know, everybody had a good time. Yeah, you know, just just yeah, just drama free. Got the game started a little bit late, but you know that that happens. Had the excitement of y'all went to went to overtime in y'all oh, game. That was crazy. I thought Jim Jones was gonna shut down the venue. He tried to call it a tie. Nah, you know, he was like, nah, we're not having no tie. He had somewhere to go because he was upset. Like, yeah, he was like, nah, we ain't having but no tie. I'm not gonna lie. I think Cyburns did his thing. Yeah, he did. I knew who that kid was. That first yeah. half, we, we had him like. 17-4, like, me and Tall Man was just killing him. Yeah, he was just dunking all over the place. He, yeah. I think he got my head the most highlights. He was just everywhere. But, I mean, at his height. Highlights. Yeah, yeah, he was just, like, tippy toe and his head. Once his so. head on the exercise, the <laughs> locker room, you have to see it. <laughs> that does lead to our fan mail question. All three of us uh, were there to witness, to answer Melvin from the Bronx. He write, out of all the celebrities at Bowling for Peace event, who had the, who had the best game? When you say celebrity name, give me the celebrity names. Well, I mean, that would be including you. Okay. Uh, you know, everyone, everyone Russell, Lito, Mark John Jeffries. Or, you know, one game or the other, like. Rex, uh, Cortez, Mook, all of those guys played. Jim Jones. Well, Jim, Gro Jim Jones definitely had, like, a, he was in the teens with it, so you got to, you know, he was definitely in the score. He was in there. I'm definitely going to tap myself for the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the actual guy that was, um, one of them was my boy Mel White, I, and he entertains, but also he played overseas. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we count that. And then you got Cyburns. That's that was his name in the building. Like, like, who is he though? Does anybody know who he was? He just he just, he just the Cyburns. Knicks. That's that's who he is. Listen, that's that's who he is. anybody's in the booth for the Knicks right now. He belongs on the Knicks. Wherever whoever he was, because that kid he put on a great game the first game. Yeah, and, and then he came back. In the second game, they called him, and he, he probably was just about to walk out, and they begged for his help, and he came back, and he brought that game back. So, 
I, I, I don't know. I definitely, me, uh, Jimmy, and uh, the tall guy, definitely. But shout out to him. I don't know if he's tall man because he like. I mean, when you're he, 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 God put him on earth. He did what he had to no, do. It, that's it, it wasn't shit. fair. That's like you were in high school when you played a bunch of kindergarten. That's, that's, that's the height difference he had. So I, I, I didn't complain. They had a dude that was over there. I was flying from the foul line. You know? Yeah, they did have. have I, I don't know who that I guy was. His name, but, but he was him. taking off. He was flying from the foul line. Like everybody had. It, that's what made the game awesome too, because a lot of the people. You know what? Even in the first game, the game I didn't play in, I like DJ Just game. Yeah, actually, Just Just, just, played, just played really well. Just I had to put him up there too. on my team. Like you know, Just was getting busy. He has all the signs of somebody else that should be on the Knicks. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I might have to add in the 6'4 starting point guard to uh, Mark John Jeffries. He got a little game out there, too. He was knocking down a lot of threes. Like, oh, yeah, he definitely did his thing. He definitely did his yeah, thing. I was saying he was the Kevin Hart of that <laughs> that version of the celebrity. Yeah, he got his little, 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 little thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, man, you better stop it, man. <laughs> but he was <laughs> all over the court, though. Like, he was everywhere. Yeah. He was doing it for TV, and, baby. And yeah. he did the Iron Man, uh, the, both games back-to-back -back as well. But I got to say, Jim Jones. I mean, he, the, the, like you said, quiet 16. He went out there, you know, he got his hook shots in, he got his layups Everything in. was in the paint. Yeah, he had some yeah. passes. He, didn't, he, threw, he threw an alley at, yeah. at one point. That, that was crazy. He got that alley-oop assist there. So And uh, with all the partying and the things that he go through, you wouldn't think he was one of the dudes that played the whole game. Exactly. Yeah. And not only that, but when I interviewed him after the game, you know, he was sore, but he went out there, he took pictures with every single fan, he was able to do the interview with me, and at the same time, after that 40 minutes of being tired, he's the first one to say, no tie, I want. We, we're doing overtime. And he's out there, He's he knows that a lot of the fans out there came to fun. see him, he was one of the biggest names out there, he's out there dancing on the court and stuff, and entertaining the fans, so... Uh, I, I got to give it to Jim Jones, uh, my official prediction on that one. From, uh, thanks for writing in. Melvin, our email address is fanmail at realfansrealtalk.com. You could hit us on, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. And our Twitter and Instagram at realfantalk. And, of course, all our individual contact information and all the full information is on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. You can check out our archived episodes, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are live every Thursday on BPN, Channel 56, Time Warner, Verizon in all five boroughs on Channel 44, and uh, Optimum, Channel 69 for those of you in the Brooklyn area or in the five boroughs that are watching on YouTube. Uh, you can check us out live every Thursday. We also air live every Tuesday on BronxNet Television for, for you Bronx residents out there, Verizon 34 and uh, Cablevision Optimum Channel 68 and stream live on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. Um, now, we had our own little celebrity game out there, but the All-Star game is out there as well. Uh, Trip Young, what, what do you got to say as far as the the starters and Kobe once again being named, even though he's not playing in, uh, in the starting lineup? Um, I mean, it's the it's the fan vote, so they're they're gonna vote for Kobe probably until he retires. But I mean, everybody knows that second guard spot should have went to James Harden with the uh, season that he's having, leading the league in scoring. The Rockets are playing some great basketball, but again, it's Kobe. You know, like you were talking about earlier with that whole brand thing. Kobe is a brand in himself, so the fans are definitely gonna vote he's him. So like the yo Yao Ming, yeah, you him, know, he got so. the Yao Ming effect going for him. But um, I'm sure James Harden will be replacing him in the starting lineup. Um, and then, you know, of course, Steph Curry, who's having, a, having <laughs> a great season. He's definitely having the MVP season. You know, possible he can get that award if he stays, you know, playing at the, at the level that, that he is playing. Um, Melo got in the starting start too. I think I that, that, that was a little controversy <laughs> too, though, because I don't well, know if he's having that good of a year. So, yeah, and I guess he's he fourth does. in the league in scoring. So, I mean, and yeah, I, mean so, yeah I, I guess, but I mean, when your team is like, you yeah, know, actually, they won last night. Made the well, they, yes, you know what? They have been. They have been playing well recently. They won last year. I was shocked. I wasn't sure if I was dreaming. Okay. Well, Kevin Durant didn't play. I mean, I still give him that. Why are you winning? Are you going to tank or you're not going to tank? 
Russ like, Brook had 40. It? Yeah, he did. And it. they still won. And, you know, Melo played a great game last night. But I, I'm, I'm actually happy because you got to have somebody from New York on the All-Star team in New York. You know, it wouldn't even be right if, if like, you know, if they were What about him. the new kid from Brooklyn? You see, he dropped 17 quiet. He, he was a game changer. Well, I don't know if you saw the game. I mean, that's, that's, that's Brooklyn. We always want to support the home nah. team, man. Come on now. But I'm liking, I mean, I don't, I don't know how I feel about Mason Plumlee actually being in the dunk contest, too. That's another thing, because I've not really seen him doing exciting dunks. But I'm still going to support him, too, just because he plays for the Nets. But he has been playing some good good basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what's going on with the Nets right now. They're trying to get rid of everybody, though. So. The, it, and the, the same and, thing and that's going on with the trying Knicks. To, trying to same leave. thing that's going on with the Knicks. They want to crash everybody out so they can create the budget yeah. to get better players. So you got Aldridge and uh, Gasol up next season. Rondo is up, you know, next year. So I know they're trying to fill it. It's working on something. The Zen Master got, got some tricks up his sleeve for next season. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do because it can't I, be this anymore. I actually thought Lance was coming to Brooklyn. I, that I would have I would have I, I would have liked that. But you know what? At the same time. I don't know if that would have been the best thing for Lance exactly Stevenson like because him being at home, you know, he's had his little controversial past here, you know, in, in New York. So I don't know if him coming back to Brooklyn would be the best thing for his career. I think he actually was more at peace. Like for those who, you know, off camera, he was running on the beach. He had his fam, immediate fam around him. You know, sometimes you need the immediate fam around you to cope with you, to like to tell you to chill out. Yeah. You know, somebody you don't know can't tell you to chill out. Yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of true. Well, I mean, we still got time. Trade deadline, you know, isn't here just yet, so something might just happen. And I know they are trying to move him because he, he has not been playing well at all, especially, you know, where he was at last season. You know, he had a great season. And then, you know, to, 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 to move, sign, sign that new deal, and then now he hasn't really been playing well, and then the injuries. So maybe a change of scenery might, might actually help him out. A lot of people feel in Coney he should have stayed on Indiana. They yeah. think that chemistry was there, like, at least for some of us. I can't say all, but, you know, when we heard that he might come to the Knicks, you know, I mean to the Nets, yeah, that, I thought that uh, would Yeah, know. him playing for the, for the home team, but, you uh, know. Well, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen, for Shot for Shot. For those of you that don't know how Shot for Shot works, we ask a series of five questions, two contestants, one judge, whoever the judge agrees with gets the point. If both contestants agree, no point is awarded. We don't give a unfair advantage to the person that goes first and points out all the good topics out there. So uh, the only fair way to do it, even though we do end up in uh, some ties with uh, a few questions, but um, the loser has to wear team apparel of a team that they hate. And uh, since you are our guest, you have the official referee jersey for you, if you don't mind uh, judging this edition of Shot for Shot as uh, okay. myself battle. I actually have to put this on? You can yeah, probably have to put it on if you yeah, want. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm trying to help him out out here. You know, it's called Brandon. It's my, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 it, then it cuts the check anyway. It's all good. Hey, hey okay, okay. <laughs> all right, so could you start us off with the first question and, uh, you know, make sure the ball is completely uh, flated uh, properly since you're the referee for the day. What's the first question? Uh, who is the better cornerback? Or who's the better uh, who's the better cornerback, Richard Sherman or Dal Revis? Um, I mean, I I gotta go. Honestly, I gotta go with Revis Allen, man. Um, I mean, and that's not to take away from Richard Sherman, but Richard Sherman also has the Legion of Boom behind him, Cam Chancellor, who might be the best in in the business out there. Um, and and on top of that, Richard Sherman usually stays on one side of the field. Darrell Reeves is all over the place when he's on the field, you know. And he's actually he's healthy. Um, I, I think yeah, pretty much he hasn't given up a touchdown this season. So I still got to go with, with Darrell Reeves, man. I'm gonna go uh, the other way on this one. We have a disagreement right off the bat. <laughs> I'm going with Richard Sherman. I think his talent level scared. They both scare quarterbacks to not throw in their direction, but at the same time, Richard Sherman is also that very, very vocal leader out there with the Legion of Boom. He's in everyone's face, getting them hyped up. If they make a mistake, he's right up in there every single play, and his teammates' faces getting them fired up, and I, I think the leadership ability combined with the talent gives the edge to Richard Sherman. Wow, that was good. I mean, yeah, I definitely. Do y'all always agree? Or, no, we don't. We, we, yeah, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Over. So, we, well, you got to give us one of us the point. I went with Sherman. He went with Revis. I'm going to have to go with Sherman on that one. All right. 
All right. There we have it. Myself uh, up one nothing so far. Question number two, please. All right. Over under 40% chance LeBron James win his fifth MVP this season. You know, aside from me being president of the LeBron James Hate Club, uh, you know, we saw last year Kevin Durant getting the MVP. I think after you win a certain amount, uh, you know, we saw it with Jordan where Barkley won it even though Jordan deserved to win it. Karl Malone winning it even though Jordan deserved to win it. Uh, plus, you have Kyrie Irving dropping 55, and you, you have other people holding the weight on that team a, a lot more. Um, so I'm not sure. I, a 40% chance, I'd probably give him 25% chance. Jeez. I don't think there's anyone uh, that high. He still might win it, but I, I got to go under 40%. I got to disagree again. I got to go with the over on this one. I mean, it's, it's LeBron James. You know, he took the time off, and he's come back. He's been averaging 37-7 and seven since he came back. The Cavs on eight-game win streak. I know Kyrie dropped 55 last night, but LeBron didn't play last night. But as you see, Cleveland has been climbing back up to the in, in the east. So, you know, uh, at this at this rate, they'll definitely move back up to the top of the Eastern Conference, and this is about the time that LeBron James really starts taking off. Anyway, like when he when he was down two years ago to Kevin Durant, it's about this time Miami went on that on that long you know winning streak, and um, he came back and he took the MVP. So not saying he's he's definitely going to get it, but I I do think it's over forty percent chance. Wow. Uh, personally, I'm a LeBron James fan, but. I don't know. He has more than 40%, though. I think he does, but he, it's been rough for him since he's been over there at Cleveland. And a lot of people was able to show star status. So I might have to go him on this one. So it's tied up, one to one? Uh, yeah. One -on -one. All right. Who is the better coach, Belichick or Pete Carroll? Uh. This is a rough one because they're both actually really good coaches. Uh, I mean, Pete Carroll, you know, won it on the collegiate level and, you know, on the professional level. And then Belichick, I mean, he might be one of the greatest football minds of all time. <sighs> you know what? I, I got to go with, with Belichick because, you know, they, they won three Super Bowls and, you know, when they won those three Super Bowls, they didn't have that was before they got a Randy Moss over there. You know, that was before they had any any top five, top ten really receivers really. It was kinda more so, you know, just that system. He has a great great system in New England. I mean even, we saw even when, when uh when Tom Brady went down that season, you know, they still had a, a good year with the backup. You know, it still still won won ten games that year. Um, you know, not to take anything away from Pete Carlin because I think he's a great coach too. You know, but I mean, he has a great football team. He has one of the best defenses I've, I've ever seen. You know, um, so I, I don't know. I, in different places, I would have to, you know, I would go, go with Belichick. So I, I definitely got to say Belichick on that one. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I'm going to agree. Bill Belichick, I mean, he's probably going to go down as one of the greatest coaches of all time. This is his sixth Super Bowl. Uh, obviously, he lost to my G-men, so the, the, that's fine. He, he does get caught for cheating, so that you might want to put an asterisk next to that. But at the same time, he gets the job done. His sixth Super Bowl appearance, possibly his fourth victory. He can't, he can't uh, you know, P. Carroll's got a ways to go before he gets on Belichick's level. So we're in agreement there. So next question, please. That's a tie. Okay. See, I do agree. Yeah, sometimes. All right. <laughs> no. A lot of the times, actually. <laughs> you never know. Uh, Clay Thompson or Steve Curry, who would win the three-point shootout? Uh, I know the answer to that one. But yeah, I'm, I'm going with Steph Curry on, on that one. Yeah, I, I, I mean they, they both the Splash Brothers, but I gotta go with Steph Curry too. I can't, I, I can't go against Steph Curry, even though Clay Thompson had that game the other it's night. It's usually the one you least expect in yeah, a point contest. But too, I still gotta though. take Steph, man. I can't, I can't go against Steph. Like, you know, going against the guards, we don't know how Clay Thompson is feeling, though. You know, but even though we know what Steve, yeah. Stephen Curry would do, yeah. So that's a tie on that that's one. That's a tie. Yep. Last yep. question. Okay, um, who will have a big impact on the outcome of the Super Bowl? Rob Grouncy, Cam Chancellor, Marshawn Lynch, or Darrell Revis? Uh, 
That's, that's a tough one, because I mean, that's... All right, I'm... This, is, this is rough. Ah, this is a rough one. I might ah. always say go with your first instinct. Ah, I know. You know what? I gotta go with Rob Gronkowski because you know I, I picked the Patriots to win, and in order for them to win, Rob Gronkowski has to to play well, and he's healthy. He's you know the, definitely the best tight end in the league by far. I mean, twelve hundred yards this season. Uh, you know. So I gotta I gotta go with, with Gronkowski, man. I I don't think I don't even think like the Seahawks, you know, have an answer for that boy. So I gotta go with, with Gronkowski. I think I think he will. Are you gonna make our guest job a more difficult and come up with an overtime question? Because <laughs> I mean, uh, we both picked the Patriots to win, and Gronkowski's that guy that you know doesn't matter who's on him, he, he manages to get the job done. I don't think he's going to have. A breakout game, but I think he'll have a better game than the rest of the people mentioned there. Um, so uh, I got I got to go with Gronk on that one. I mean, Cam Chancellor, Darrell Rivas, they're going to do their thing on defense. Marshawn Lynch, uh, I don't think he's going to be doing that much against uh, the Patriots defense. So I got to go with uh, Gronkowski. Wow! So you got you got an overtime question you could throw this, and then you got a freestyle this question right now. So what's up? That's good. That's a good one. You know what? We're going to jump. While, while you think of another question, we're going to go into this date in sports history, and then we'll get, get back to you with the overtime question. I got you. So in 1936, the first players were elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Honus Wagner, Christy Mathewson, and Walter Johnson. A couple of Yankees in there. Shout out to the Yankees. And this day in 1995, Andre Agassi defeats Pete Sampras to win the Australian Open. That was a huge rivalry back in the days whenever uh, Pete Sampras and Agassi got it on. So it was uh, definitely an exciting uh, match in 1995. Mm -hmm. And also in 1995, the Super Bowl 29. The 49ers beat the Chargers 49 to 26. Steve Young was the MVP of that one. I still got that game on VHS. I recorded <laughs> back in those days. <laughs> Don't date yourself, Statman. It's, it's no, all good. Just, I mean, the fans know you're old, but you, know, you ain't got to you know, do that on, on live TV. It's all, it's all good, though. Happy birthday to Mark Russell and Andre Reed, though. Yep, definitely happy birthday to the two bowlers right there. And uh, do we have an uh, overtime question yet from uh, D Chambers? Putting you on the spot a little bit. On my, my, my question is always be the weird questions. My question would be, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, who will win between LeBron James and Kobe? What, right now? Right now? Or the not with the torn off. Let's take two years <laughs> off. The two years off of Kobe, one-on-one? -on -one, uh... I would still have to, to go with, with LeBron because, I mean, two years ago, LeBron was still the best basketball player in the NBA. I mean, prime against prime might make it a tougher tougher discussion, but I think... Prime against prime. I would, still, I would still take LeBron prime against prime because, you know, in LeBron, I mean, pretty much LeBron's entire career, LeBron's always been the best player on his team. Kobe was number two during the Shaq years out there, so I would still have to, to go with LeBron. Yeah, it's going to be tough. LeBron got, like, the size and strength advantage, uh, the defensive He's advantage. He's defense. Play, yeah. But as far as careers, I would still go Kobe as of right now. Still has a better career than LeBron, but LeBron still got many years to go. So even though I'm president of LeBron James Hate Club, I got to go with LeBron on that one. It's funny. I would say Kobe because Kobe go against the odds. I don't know. Yeah, he does make some shots that make absolutely yeah. no sense when they go in. <laughs> Just, <laughs> well, five what? people guarding them, so. But you know what? I'm going to go with James on that one. I'm, not a, I'm a LeBron James fan. <laughs> but, you know, that's just a question I always argue. All right, double overtime, then. You got something else? <laughs> Pippen or Jordan? In a one-on-one -on -one game? Yeah. I did, did, they they did that Jordan beat him. Jordan destroyed him. Yeah. And mopped the floor with For those of you that don't know, back in the day, Pippen didn't like the fact that he was the second man on the team, and he thought, you know, with his ego issues, so Jordan had to put him on the floor one-on-one -on -one and wipe the court with him, and then Pippen was put in his place from that point on. Pippen's still one of the most underrated players in the history of the game because he was great in his own respect. When Jordan retired, he led the Bulls in um, 
scoring, assists, steals, and blocks. I, I, I think, uh, and rebounds too, I believe. So uh, all five categories, which was done by two other players, Hakeem Olajuwon and LeBron James. So uh, Pippen definitely uh, up uh, underrated though. So I want to so point that out. Triple overtime. We go. Uh, we gonna take another fan. Jason Kidd and Stockton. Oh, and Jason Kidd and Stockton in the one on one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whose turn is it to go first? This is mine. I got uh, Jason Kidd and Stockton. I mean, both of them were past first defensive players. It wasn't like no was the, like the biggest scorer. Uh, uh, this is a tough one. You know what? I'm going to go with Jason Kidd, um, and, and the reason I'm going with Jason Kidd, and I'm going to shout out Anthony Mason for this, because when we had Anthony Mason on the show, he talked about how the hardest guard he ever had was Stockton and Malone together, but when they went to the bench, it was two completely different things, if one of them was on the court without the other, so I'm going to go with Jason Kidd. Uh, that's not exactly what Anthony Mason said when I asked him the question. He said, I asked, who is the toughest person to guard? And he said, Carl Malone, but not when Stockton was off the court. Not when one yeah. or the other, you know, that had nothing to do with when Stockton well, was out there. Listen, you got to take one there. Whoever Stockton was, you know, the, the greater passer, but we're also talking about one-on-one, -on -one, and I think Stockton had some, you know, they both had range with three-point shooting, but I think Stockton had a little bit more on the speed side. I'm going to go with Stockton. Well, and the problem, Jason Kidd was one of the fastest in the I league think as they're well. Both fast. They're both fast. They're both, both yeah. good defensive yeah. guards. They both could pass well. They both got good range, but uh, I'm still going to go with Stockton. All right, so now you got it. You got the difference. It's, it's crazy because... I would have thought Stockton was that dude, you know? But, you know, as you break it down like that, uh, I have to go with Jason Kidd on that one. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Trip Young. I'm back on top, back back to my rightful place <laughs> on the throne as your official shot this for shot. This is Jason Kidd who was um, the coach of the Nets for Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I didn't <laughs> know that. <laughs> See? <laughs> it just so happened. <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's all good, but, but thank you, man, for, for being the judge right there. We go, we, we definitely going to move along. I'm really quick, though, Chambers, um, tell us what's coming up next. Right now, I want them to just go out, download, take time out, listen to that warrior mentality, number one, and number two, Listen to number two right now. We back to rap, you know, especially with all the sounds that's going on. It's, it's great worldwide sound. I'm not going to just say, oh, it's a New York sound. It's a worldwide sound. Adapt to that. Check out that one by one, two with Fred the Godson. Download that on iTunes. Also listen to Shake the Block, Uncle Murder, the clean version or the dirty version. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and definitely for my homies, Change Drugs, let's get this video out there. And, you know, look out for me on a lot, hitting that road and being getting that road warrior state to state trip. Stay tuned to that. And you want to give them the, the Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that? Oh, yeah. Follow, follow me you? on Instagram, D Chambers, D C H M B E R Z C I W. Spell my name with a Z, not with an S, because they're sleeping on me. And uh, follow that W in my power clothesline brand. Definitely, you see the hat, get W and fly, live with that warrior mentality. Ladies, live with that will and mind power. All right, there you have it. One more quick fan mail question before we go off the air. Uh, Chris from Queens writes, is there any way the NFL can make the Pro Bowl more exciting? Yes, don't have it. Well, <laughs> that's, I, mean, that's, I think that's what they what did with Irving versus Carter, like kind of a fantasy thing where they each pick their team and stuff, as opposed to it being traditional AFC, NFC, was something that added a little twist to it. I kind of liked it. Uh, what more can you do, really? You know, I mean, you're not going to have players from the Super Bowl go unless you push it to after the Super Bowl again like it used to be. So, um, you know, maybe make it after the Super Bowl and have some of the players that were in the Super Bowl still compete like they used to do and combine that with the, you know, the fantasy model. But that's about all I have to say. So, all right. Well, with that being said, uh, it's about time to wrap things up. I'd like to thank D Chambers, Coney Island Stalin in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Coney Island Warrior. And of course, Trip Young. Uh, I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. Thank you all for joining us on Real Fans Real Talk, and we'll see you next week. Make sure y'all get that warrior mentality. Stop playing. All right? with that. Brooklyn, we here. 6 2. No time for the small talk.
face facts. What up? What up? Real fans, real talk.com. Where Arthur Diamond trip young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the art. Even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent you. From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your.